Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So I am so excited today because we're going to be doing a book review on a novel that I have literally wanted to read for like a year and a half. <laughs> um, yeah, and I finally got my hands on it. It came in my most recent Nightworms, and I finally read it. Um, so y'all might be able to tell, but this is How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix, the latest release from Grady Hendrix, who is one of my instant buy authors. I was absolutely blown away by My Best Friend's Exorcism. I really, really loved um, The Southern Book Club's guide, guide to Slaying Vampires. I thought Horror Store was fun. I thought We Sold Our Souls was fun. Um, however, I did not enjoy his last release, Final Girl Support Group, and I was actually stunned by how much I did not like that book. So I had a lot of like hesitations going into this one, not knowing how I was going to feel about it. Um, and I have some thoughts. I have some thoughts. Um, also please excuse my makeup, uh, I'm like half in my makeup, half out. I never finish my makeup before work, um, until I'm afraid about to leave for work, so I have like no lashes, my lower lash line is like not there, and I'm wearing like a chapstick. So I know it might look a little like jarring because it's so blue, but that is why. However, nothing was going to deter me from reading this. One of the things I really appreciate about Nightworms is they send us all this Pupkin stuff. Uh, Pupkin is a character in the book. So I got to see what he looked like, um, like little Valentine's Day cars. He's really quite adorable, um, but I loved that. And then we got a signed book plate as well in Nightworms with a little pupkin on it as well. And it says, Obey the Puppet Worm. Um, so I'm going to read the inside flap first. So in case you haven't heard the synopsis, you are in the know now. So it says, when Louise finds out that her parents have died, she dreads going home. She doesn't want to leave her daughter with her ex and fly to Charleston. She doesn't want to deal with her family home, stuffed to the rafters with the remnants of her father's academic career and her mother's lifelong obsession with puppets and dolls. She doesn't want to learn how to live without the two people who knew and loved her best in the world. Most of all, she doesn't want to deal with her brother, Mark, who never left their hometown, gets fired from one job after another, and resents her success. Unfortunately, she'll need his help to get the house ready for sale because it'll take more than some new paint on the walls and clearing out a lifetime of memories to get this place on the market. But some houses don't want to be sold, and Louise and Mark's home has other plans for both of them. Like his novels The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires and The Final Girl Support Group, How to Sell a Haunted House is a classic Hendrix. Equal parts heartfelt and terrifying, it's a gripping new read from the horror master. I should quote from USA Today. Okay, so let's break down a couple things with this. First off, I liked this book. I think it's important to say I liked this book because I'm about to tell you everything I didn't like about this book. But I, I definitely want to like really, really emphasize I really did like this book. That being said, um, first off, the title of this book is so misleading. This is not a haunted house story and I think this is like the number one thing that kind of peeved me about this book is I really, really wanted like a quirky ghost, um, <laughs> Like, goes actually trying to kick people out of a house and they are desperately trying to sell it because they need the money. Like, I thought that was going to be funny, humorous. I thought it was going to be really interesting. I thought it really was going to focus on, like, the realty and, like, having to do exorcism. And there was so much comedic promise for what the title of this book says. Um, you know, I felt like my best friend's exorcism and Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires had this weird kitschiness about it that made it kind of super lighthearted at the same time super super scary that this book didn't have. This is one of Grady Hendrix's only books that's like not set in a different time period, right? Like uh, My Best Friend's Exorcism is the 80s, Southern Book Club is the 90s, Final Girl Support Group is like the 2010s, a lot of um, We Sold Our Souls is like end of the 80s, early 90s, like glam rock era. But this one is entirely set in the present for the most part, except for like one, one or two sequences. Um, and I thought that there was just so much potential for Grady Hendrix to write like a really funny story on realty. And it kind of started that way, especially when they, who is it, Mercy? Like when they have Mercy come and like appraise the house or whatnot. Like there were definitely moments where it could have gone in that direction. However, this book isn't a haunted house story. This book is about possessed dolls and puppets, which is also cool. And it also very much fits with Grady Hendrix's um, style and his weird combining of humor and horror and I kind of wish that the book had been advertised that way because I thought I was getting one thing and I was really excited about that and I didn't. I got possessed dolls, possessed puppets. 
that being said, I really enjoyed that. Um, but it was just a little jarring because I was expecting something and got something else. I thought Pupkin was awesome. I thought Pupkin was scary. I'm so happy I had these little visuals of what Grady Hendrix thought he looked like because he was a little difficult, I feel like, for me to have figured out had I not seen what he looked like. I love how his little hands are called his nubbins. Like, the attention to detail on Pupkin was fantastic. Um, and I thought it was a cool concept. I thought Pup Creepy Possessed Dolls, owned by um, a woman who was obsessed and adores and loves puppets, um, is now gone on and the puppets don't know what's going on. A phenomenal concept. Great. Not advertised in the book. Um, but I got over that. Um, and then the book... Uh, the first half of the book was not easy for me to read. Um, not because it was written badly, but because Grady Hendrix created a dysfunctional family relationship um, not only between um, Louise and her parents, but primarily between Louise and her brother and her brother and the rest of their family. That was so believable and palpable that like it just made me feel like I was at the worst family reunion ever. Um, it was so uncomfortable to read just the weird like favoritism that Louise felt her parents had um, for Mark, the way that the parents split up the will, like just the anxiety inducing of the relationship between Louise and Mark was so difficult to read. And then the fact that they just constantly spited one another. Um, and then Grady Hendrix would show these moments where like when Mark hosts the funeral, how it is so perfect. And like, there's no way Louise could have done that. But then you see the way that Mark is just trying to throw everything away and be done with things and how there's no way that he has time for paperwork and he needs Louise. And they're fighting back and forth on like the division of the will and who's getting how much and blah, 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 blah. And it just felt so real. And it was so anxiety inducing. Um, and it just felt like such a dysfunctional family that I was like, I don't know if I can do this. Like if the tone of this novel continues to stay that way, I can't. And there's this scene, I don't want to spoil anything, but like when Mark's in the hospital, and like he's in the hospital because like his life has been saved but like he still blames Louise for like how his life like it's just oh it's so frustrating that sibling rivalry and it was so difficult for me to get through because it was just so anxiety inducing and I just knew that that necessarily wasn't necessarily the point but it was just so realistic and I do love Grady Hendrix for that but oh and I do not think Mark or Louise are likable characters and that's another thing. I've had a lot of books recently where I do not like our main characters, but I'm really invested in the story, so I keep reading. Um, Louise became less and less likable as the story went on, and Mark became, I guess, more and more likable as the story went on, but they were still so unlikable. Um, and Grady Hendrix did consistently kind of bash on Mark for being a bartender and, like, going nowhere with his life um, through Louise and, like, her family judging him. And Mark kind of sort of defended what he was doing and how he liked it and whatnot. But the tone overall around Mark was that, like, Mark was not a successful guy. And he was kind of this, like, deadbeat freeloader. And I just want to say that that is so incorrect to say about bartenders. It is such a hard job. And it's really not one that anybody can do. And it's a lot of hard work. So I think that really bothered me, especially somebody who's been a bartender for 10 years. You know, like, it's really, really difficult and challenging work. Um, and people who've never been in the industry might not realize that, which is what I would assume with Grady Hendrix. Um, but it just didn't feel right to be like, this guy's really lazy because he's a bartender. And it's like, no, that's just not how that works. Um, but that's just my own personal aside. Um, one of the highlights for the story for me was Mark's background story. And this was something that I felt uh, very similar. And this is something that I reminded me quite a lot of the Final Girl Support Group. There's like, a uh, a, a semi story about this character called the Dream King. I think that was his name in Final Girl Support Group. It was kind of like a darker spin off Freddy Krueger. And I was so immersed in that concept that I was just like, oh my god, like Grady Hendrix needs to write an entire story on that. Mark's backstory could have been an entire novel. That was the best part of this book. It was so eye opening to that character. It made him more real. It made him more likable. It made him more understandable. It was such a good narrative and it, that's weird coming from Grady Hendrix because he's so good at writing female characters and I feel like whenever we read his novels we really only ever get a female perspective and his male perspective was just fantastic and it was depressing and fantastic and fantastical and scary and I loved Mark's entire backstory I thought that was the highlight of his entire book um 
So this was a four star read for me for kind of all of those things. I don't, I felt the book dragged on. Um, I felt the second half of the book wasn't as strong as the first half of the book. Um, again, the backstory with Mark and just the entire Waffle House sequence, fantastic. And if you've never been to Waffle House, I highly suggest you go before reading this book because Waffle House is such, it, it is such an experience. Um, it's like being in um, a Quentin Tarantino movie, <laughs> almost. Like if, um, if Cracker Barrel is like a Wes Anderson film, like if you've ever been to a Cracker Barrel, like Waffle House is the Quentin Tarantino movie. Um, and I just think that that whole scene was just so perfect. And then it just kind of like, I felt like it could have simmered off after that whole like returning back to the house sequence, but it continued for like another act. And this act then involved um, possessions of more people in the family, um, which kind of made it very creepy, but it also kind of felt like tacked on at the end. And I just didn't necessarily feel that the book needed it. Um, like it kind of got all over the top and kind of like kooky and like all of a sudden like all of the puppets were alive and I, I don't know, it got, it just kind of felt like very over the top, um, like that final sequence and I, I don't know, I just didn't buy it as much as everything else that happened and again it was a shining moment where it could have gone back to selling the haunted house. It just kind of got to a point where it just felt very, very over the top. Like, I feel like certain elements of that last act didn't need to be in there. I really did like the reveal. I, I guess I maybe saw it coming. Like, I wasn't surprised when I read the reveal, but I don't necessarily think I predicted it. Um, and I thought it was a really cool concept, but I think they just put too much into it involving all of these characters. And don't get me wrong, Bar Barb was awesome. Um, but like, if we're gonna use Barb, maybe we didn't need to use Poppy in that way, you know? And I felt like every time I was reading about Poppy and Ian, I was just kind of like rolling my eyes because it was just like, I feel like these characters are just lumped on to this story to like fill it out more and it didn't need it. Um, and it just got very grandiose by the end and I just, I felt like it could have been tighter. Um, and they could have like trimmed a little bit off and it still would have been a very tight story. Um, but yeah, overall, I ended up really, really liking this. I don't love it anywhere near as much as My Best Friend's Exorcism or Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, but this was a four-star read for me, and I liked it more than We Sold Our Souls, and I liked it more than Horror Store, and I liked it more than Final Girl Support Group, which is such a relief because I was so disappointed in Final Girl Support Group. Um, and I hope he comes out with something new and still whimsical. I would love to see him do more, um, like, flashback or, like, period piece horror, like back in the 80s and 90s, um, and just see what he does, because I do feel like he thrives there, and it was interesting seeing another Charleston set novel, because I believe this is now his third, um, and you really do get that southern mentality in his books when he sets them in Charleston, like it's very, very believable to what, um, like a southern family in Charleston feels like, my stepdad's family is all from Charleston, um, so I really do appreciate that. But I did really enjoy this book. Not his best, definitely not his worst, and very, very fun, um, but definitely a little long, definitely could have been tightened up a bit. Um, and if you have any issues with a dysfunctional family, it will create so much anxiety in you. Anyways, that is all that I have for you guys today. As always, I post every Monday and Thursday, sometimes on Saturdays. And if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below, and I will catch you on the next one. Bye.